Well, today, December 1st, is World AIDS Day. The day is dedicated to raising awareness to the AIDS pandemic caused uh, by the spread of the HIV virus. Here in Ghana, as of 2014, an estimated 150,000 people infected uh, with the virus. That's what's been recorded. HIV prevalence is at 0.8% in 2014, and there are an estimated 35.3 million people living with HIV worldwide. Between 1981 and 2012, AIDS has killed 36 million people worldwide. And this year, the theme is focus, partner, achieve an AIDS-free generation to highlight the need uh, for government and health officials, NGOs and individuals to address AIDS prevention and treatment. Uh, so he, with me this morning uh, to look at the issue of antiretroviral drugs um, access and how in general persons living with HIV are living is Raymond Aholu, uh, who is the Greater Accra Chairman of the Ghana Network of Persons Living with HIV. AIDS, uh, and also Clement uh, Azigwe, who is a former president of the Association of Persons Living with HIV, HIV AIDS. So, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Too. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing, really? Oh. Okay. You always look good. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, what does the day mean to you? I mean, um, do, you, do, you, do you feel like we, we, we don't talk about the issue until it's like 1st of December? Oh, we have to. We have to. Uh, this day is a very important day and um, as you've already said earlier on it's a day that has been dedicated by the UNE um, to commemorate um, today's day actually to remember our lovely brothers and sisters who have departed through HIV virus and um, sympathy with them yeah. Mm. So today is a very important day for us. Okay. Yeah, what, what I would say, um, good morning, our viewers and listeners. What I would say is that uh, anytime, uh, first, day, first December, we are not talking about it. Since the year start, we are, we are not hearing AIDS cases, we are not hearing AIDS awareness now. And AIDS still is killing uh, the individual, individuals in their homes. So today, let's, we are creating awareness to see how best, not only first December, every even quarter, we can even do something like this so that to commemorate the, the day. And also look at how we can help our brothers and sisters who are also living with HIV and they don't want to come out. To also know that, yes, we can live. Because we started living with HIV since 1998. Mm. And now about uh, treatment is in Ghana, 2003 and we are alive. So I'm giving them hope that uh, those who are lying down and maybe looking at uh, us here, we are, I'm living with HIV since 98 and I'm on treatment. You've been living with it since 98? 98. Okay. I mean, we are lucky in Ghana, uh, the, the rich, rich, uh, the drug rich Ghana 2003 and we are the pioneers. Okay. So I'm encouraging those who are, the viewers who are living with HIV and they, are, they think that they are going to die I don't think they will die. Okay, so let, let's talk about how you got it. Do you know? Because usually when, when you're diagnosed, when they tell you that you're positive, then you begin to think, how could I have gotten it? Where did I get it? Yeah. Have you been able to figure out? Yeah, we'll figure it out. But there, you know, a lot of people still think that uh, HIV is far from them. The time 1998, they told me that I'm HIV positive. Uh, I think that uh, HIV is far from me because back in the South, we think that the barriers, our women who go to neighbors, uh, 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 countries like uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, they, they, got, they got AIDS. No known that it's within us. Mm. So they told me that I'm HIV positive. Uh, I did not agree because I didn't travel to anywhere. I mean, Ghana. So. What I would say is that is is within us. Between I'm interested between ninety eight when you got to know that uh, you were positive uh, till you started getting the drugs. How were you surviving? Yes, yeah, nineteen ninety eight still no drug, mm -hmm. and we were using local uh, herbal drug. Okay. And uh, the herbal drug also help us to reach the antiretroviral drugs. Okay. Through the effort of Kofiana and Kofi, uh, John, uh, 
Kufo. Kufo. Okay. All right. So um, I want to come back to how easily accessible the antiretroviral drugs, uh, how they are today. But uh, I've got something that I want to play because uh, my colleague Latif Idris was out uh, and spoke to the Director General of the Ghana AIDS uh, Commission, uh, Dr. Angela L. Adas. Uh, on dealing with AIDS stigma and measures to educate the youth to protect themselves against the virus. And I want us to uh, listen to what she's got to say, and then we'll come back. As we mark World AIDS Day about stigmatization, are we changing the message? The message cannot change. No good message changes. We are here by the grace of God. The message of the prophet has not changed. When you have a true message, it cannot change. Stigma is the single most important thing that kills. The single most important thing that prevents people from accessing services. The single thing that prevents men and women from knowing their status, protecting themselves, becoming empowered with information, protecting their loved one, protecting their unborn child. So the message against stigma is as harsh as ever. It is an abomination in the eyes of God. It is a sin against God. If you love, if you call yourself a child of God, you will love your brother, you will love your sister, and that love will be unconditional. And so when somebody, you think that somebody has HIV, or you know that somebody has HIV, that is not when you shun the person. That is not when you throw the person out of the house. That is not when you make life miserable for that person. That is when you support. That is when you aid that person to hospital. That is when you remind that person to take their drugs. That is when you say, because of your unborn child, remember to take your medicine. That is when you say, you are HIV positive, you are breastfeeding, take your medicine. Make sure your child has their medicine so that you will not give infection to the ones you love. The message against stigma remains as strong as ever. And we should not stigmatize against people living with HIV. We must support, we must show compassion, we must love, we must care. So that we will all be healthy, like my brother and my sisters here. What is the difference? Are they not productive men and women? They are having children. They have four children who are HIV negative. Charity, you have how many? Four. four. You have a one on the way. Yeah. Four and a half. Yeah. You have how many? Yeah. You have one. Yeah. And these are young men and women who are going to school, who are studying to become our future leaders. Let it not be that because of stigma, we have men and women who cannot go to hospital. And when they go to hospital, they hide their drug. And if somebody is in the house, they will not take their drug that day. Let it not be in Ghana. And I gather you are one of the ambassadors? Yes, I am one of the Heart to Heart ambassadors. So, and that tells me that you are living with HIV? Sure, sure, sure. And you are pregnant? Yes. Um, this, this is not difficult at all. It, it's, it, the fact that I'm positive doesn't mean that um, I cannot get pregnant or anyone who is positive cannot, should not be pregnant. The whole thing is about um, putting a, an image of um, persons living with HIV. Um, the, the, the image that if somebody is positive, there is hope, there is life, there is everything after, after HIV. Therefore, um, the pregnancy that I'm carrying right now doesn't mean that the baby is going to be positive. There are measures in place. There are, I have doctors who are taking good care of me. I'm also taking the drugs, which helps me to you know, ensure that the baby will be safe. So this is what we are encouraging right out there. This is what we are trying to tell everybody that if, if somebody is HIV positive, you don't have to stigmatize the person. You don't have to throw the person out, but bring the person close to you. Let the person feel part of you. As, as, as for, for, for example, my husband is negative, but he, he has done everything that he could to ensure that I will be safe, this baby will be safe, 
my four children are also negative and so we are living uh, 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 we are having a very happy family that um, society don't know about and we want to encourage everybody to know that a person living with HIV is a person living with HIV and he is a normal human being. Now, did you for, for a moment you know think that oh I'm living with HIV so I'm not gonna you know conceive I'm not gonna get myself pregnant? Initially initially when um, I tested positive it was it was like that you know it was like there is no hope you know, in those days, there was nothing like even antiretroviral drugs. So you 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 become like um, we are ready to. there is no hope for you. But when it happened that there is antiretroviral, our capacity was built. We learned more about antiretroviral. We learned what it can do. We learned what what even if you are pregnant, um, you want to conceive or you 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 can use the what you can use the medicine for. So it's like it helps us a lot. So the antiretroviral coming in to support persons living with HIV gave us a lot of hope to, to, to survive, gave us a lot of hope to ensure that, oh, once you have antiretrovirals, once you take good care of yourself, once you are, you hear totally to your doctors or you advices, it's, it's like you are, you are fine, you are okay, you can still go ahead with HIV. There is still life. Initially, I did not thought, but along the line it came that I, I have to okay especially pregnant women in one sentence what would be the message you send out there I would say that they should they should encourage themselves especially husbands for their wives to do the HIV test and if it is positive we can help the, the pregnant woman and then the unborn baby to come out uh, Allah <laughs> Abinda <laughs> Allah Allah Ya to take answer, Allah Jemisha Azab, Allah Kiai, Magana Nike. So you, you heard from, from the Sheikh Ur Sharbutu, who is sending message out there to the youth to abstain. If you are not married, then you have to abstain until you get married. Now let's all go out there and get tested for the HIV in order to know our status. From Abosu Okan here in Accra, this has been Latif Idris reporting for Joy News. Okay, so message is clear now. What I'm fascinate, uh, f fascinated about, though, is a pregnant woman who herself has got HIV. I mean, she's positive with the virus. Uh, her husband is negative, and she's got three children or four with one on the way. So she's pregnant. That's amazing. Amazing story right there. But you are familiar with all these people who spoke to us uh, and, and the woman who is pregnant. And I was asking, how does it happen uh, that you're, you're positive, your husband is negative, yet you can have children who are negative? Yeah, we have a discordant couples. Yeah. We have discordant couple. This is one. Um, Charity, being the former national vice, she's now pregnant, and the husband is negative. Um, for the fact that being positive, you can someone 
be negative can propose to you, can see your beauty, can fall in love with you and propose to you that he or she loves you, then therefore I don't think there is nothing wrong about that if there is no any stigma. Mm. Yep. But charity is pregnant, being positive pregnant, she go to the doctor, she has a special doctor that will always see her immune system. There's something that we call CD4 count. That's CD4 count. They have to see that the, your level of the CD4 count is high before you take in seed. And when you take in seed, being pregnant, there is a drug that will be given to you as well to protect you, the mother, uh, both the mother and the baby, the unborn baby. Okay. So that the baby will not be infected. So over here, we have a lot of positive women, people living with the HIV who are pregnant, who are giving birth, uh, who are giving negative babies. That's what we call prevention from mother to child transmission, PNTCT. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So over here is clear. Yeah. She's also a heart to heart ambassador. Mm. Yep. But how many of such do you have? Oh. We have a lot in the system. There is a lady also called Gifty Tokonu who just got married to a negative man. Okay. A man who is not positive. But the man knew? The man knew very well. They were even on Joy FM or something like that. That was last, early this year or last year or any, yeah. So we have a lot in the system. Mm. Yeah. You, you wanted to add something? Yeah, to, to add what, what my, my, my brother said. Now, if you are a pregnant woman, if you, today you are pregnant, every pregnant woman now tested HIV mm -hmm. to make sure that it protect the child inside her womb. Yeah. So today, if you, they test you HIV positive and you are pregnant, they quickly start you on treatment okay. so that you protect the child from your womb. You see? So most of our women, those who are living with HIV and they don't have children, they, have to, they want to give birth, mm -hmm. they will go to doctor and doctor will cancel them and they start with them with their husbands, whatever. Okay. And the, mom, the people who, has, who even don't know their status, and today, if they are positive, they make sure they test you. So every pregnant woman is tested in hospital. Mm -hmm. If you're pregnant today, they will test you. Yeah. And what let most of them running or whatever, some if they test you, they ask you to bring your husband. And you know, it's because of stigma, they will, some will run and leave the clinic. Because if they want to bring their husband into the clinic to test maybe, Sometimes they can test the man negative, whilst the woman is positive. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we are trying to, now we are not doing couple testing. Okay. If you, they want to test the man, uh, the woman, they quickly say, go and bring your husband. So they test you once. But you know, I know in some, some areas, once the woman tests negative, the man thinks, oh, but I've been sleeping with her. So if she's negative, then it means I'm also negative. Otherwise, then uh, she should have been positive or something of the sort. How does it happen? that one is negative, one is positive, they sleep together unprotected and they would still, you know, the, the, the person who is positive will not pass it on to the one who is negative. I yeah. still yeah. can't get that. Uh, my sister Charity Lara, she's on treatment. Mm -hmm. So she can't pass the virus to her. But she still can have unprotected sex. Yes, if not uh, unprotected sex, she won't be pre pregnant. Yeah, let me add my voice. When you are positive, and you have been taking drug for some number of years, the virus in you become inactive. Therefore, even with the, it, it is not advisable to have unprotected sex. But we encourage the people to have prote uh, to, 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 to use condom okay. for sex. Because when you say oh, you are on drug, so you can have unprotected sex, people can abuse the, uh, the whole thing. And also, the drug you have to take it continuously mm. when you are taking it continuously it brought you it raised your cd4 count up okay uh -huh. then you you have a strong immune system mm. therefore having an affair with a negative person he may not be contracted by the disease so you are safe so you be on drug for more than five to six years continuously you can have unprotected sex mm. with that infecting your the other person. Okay. Exactly. So let's talk about how available is this drug uh, that we're all referring to, the antiretroviral. Yeah, I think this question is a good question. Now the drug for this year, we have no any shortages in our 
you can't play yet. Okay, so no shortages. It no means shortage. that yeah. you can easily assess it. You can it. easily assess it. Okay. That was last year. There was a lot of shortages, and we came out with a number of press conferences and telling the government and the stakeholders about how the drug, there's a shortages in the system. Mm -hmm. And a God and behold, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama has shown much commitment by giving 50 million to a locally manufactured pharmaceutical companies so that the drug can be available in the system. So I think the government has done a lot and it is going on. So as of now, every facility, we have the drugs. The drugs is there. You can easily go. At times, they can give you three months, even four months. When you want to travel and come, you can be given the number of the month that you want to spend up there. Mm. Uh -huh. And now the problem that we are having is what we call reagent. The reagent, that is the problem that we are having now. The asset now, the drug, we have avail availability of the drug in the system. Okay. Yeah. Is it free? Do you have to be registered yeah. to, to, to have access? To add to what uh, my brother said. Uh, since 2000, we, 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 we started treatment, unless you come to uh, Accra or Kumasi, even Accra, before you get the treatment. Now, so far, we have 175, 175 uh, centers across Ghana. Mm -hmm. So you see access, people are not assessing treatment. It doesn't mean that now you can travel from even from north to Accra or Kumasi to take your drugs. So we have centers across the country which we can assess. And you mentioned about, now, is it free? Mm -hmm. Through the government, now our drug to also cover by national health insurance. If you have national health insurance, it's covered. So if you don't, if you don't, you have to pay. Okay. Is, uh, is it expensive? Five cities. The, the government subsidizes it to five cities. Okay. So five, five cities per what? A month. Okay. You know, they give you ten. So, so they will give you for the month, for the five month. cities five for the, for the to month. last for the month. To last for the month. Okay. And that's what happens. So that's covered. Mm. So you see, access now. So only now, which let we are not assessing the, the treatment is stigma. Mm. And people, especially our treatment centers, people cannot close their mouths. If they see Mrs. Sisters and so in their clinic, they are trying to as you may see, are by a mm. clinic. That's the thing which is now disturbing treatment. So I want to use this one, this opportunity, to also talk to those who are in the treatment centers. We don't say don't talk about it's a human. That labeling people, these people. Because you know the trick is you can't go to the hospital and say that you want an anti retroviral yeah. drug without testing for it and yeah. you have to be positive in, no, in order to have access to it yeah. so if the nurses and the doctors are not keeping their mouth shut about uh, your condition and they start telling people in the community then everybody gets to know that yeah he's HIV positive that's a big challenge yeah how can we fight it yeah let me come in actually after the doctors we have no problem with the doctors but for the nurses some nurses have no knowledge about HIV at all. So the moment they see you as positive, HIV positive, then they begin even giving the food out to you. Actually, I'm at the police hospital. That's why I assess my drugs. Okay. But over there, we have no problem at all. There is nothing like stigmatization and all that. Mm -hmm. But there are places, if I mention it right now, the moment I get outside, you see a call coming, they say, I'm busy in the hospital, I'm saying this, I'm saying this. So the last time we met with GAC, I was even putting it before them that you, you met with which group? Ghana is GAC, Ghana is okay. That is the time to uh, have a forum for this, our nursing mothers, our midwife, so that they can educate them more on HIV, mm. on HIV, so that they can be familiar with us. Because most of them, they come, they point figure at you, and the moment you know that this nurse is stigmatized, he stigmatizes you, then you will not come to the hospital mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. You will prefer, even when the hospital is within your area, you prefer to choose different hospital. Yeah, to go where and nobody knows you in that community, exactly. so you can you that can is have how it access. Goes. I you get know, you. Yeah. So how, how, how are your members dealing with this kind of situation? Yeah, that is where we have models of hosts at the various facilities now. 
you, what you've got what models of models of hoops and they are the peers when i talk peers people living with hiv mm -hmm. voluntarily we have voluntary people who are placing all the facilities okay and they are not being paid it's a voluntary that is how we call it uh -huh. so when that person is in the facility and you walk in and you are being diagnosed right now as hiv positive the moment you are crying you thought the whole uh, the, uh, that's the end of your life. Mm -hmm. Then I will come in as a model of hope. Mm -hmm. That no, I'm also positive. Okay. I also take the I'm just like Look you. at me. Okay. I'm big. I, I walk. Nobody know I'm this. I'm that. I'm this. So you take the drug and you are safe. So these are the job that the models of hope are doing the facility. Mm -hmm. So that is what we. That's the strategy that we have put in place to reduce the the level of the stigma okay yeah okay i think the yeah. last time that you were here and let me let me give you the opportunity to add something to it and then we'll come back to you you had gotten a land or so exactly you needed some funding we'll talk yeah. about that oh. yes uh, to what uh, the my, my chairman said because of that the minister of health now wanted to have you know if you go to the hospitals the label is the ART center so now they now want to copy it to if you seek where you go, OPD, mm. you started. So that nobody will see that, oh, these people are here, which, like if you go to Kolobo, we have fever unit. Mm. So anybody who goes to fever unit, they know that you are HIV positive. So they are now trying to see how they will cooperate everybody. If you are sick, you are sick. Not only HIV. Okay. You go to OPD, you take your folder. So it's only when you when you see the doctor that you know you have a conversation. A conversation with okay, cool. So it also brings the stigma down. So I think I'm pushing it before. But I, let I thought that if you have a specialized unit, then mm. that would help, right? You have a specialized then unit. that will but but now we are saying once there's a specialized unit, like the fever unit, yeah. once you go there everybody knows that you are HIV, HIV positive, positive and that's not good. No, I'm coming. Half of Kolebu, mm -hmm. it's a different apartment. Mm -hmm. And that apartment is named as uh, Fever's Unit. Okay. But everybody knows know that that place is HIV people who go mm -hmm. there. But is that a problem? It's a problem. It's a problem over there in the sense that in other hospitals, the hospital is one. But you know where your doctor is. Mm. And you walk to your, hosp uh, your doctor's uh, place. Mm -hmm. And everybody also go there. Mm -hmm. But that place... It's a whole apartment. The moment you are heading towards there, they know that you are you are HIV positive. You are going to access HIV drugs. Okay, and you don't like that because then everybody knows who you are. Yes, yes. Oh. I even push. I about. even push it that that they should look how we can they can cooperate. We sick. We all look. We have diabetes people. We have different 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 sickness. Mm -hmm. Why they will label us? Even how he is talking. He's at the rich hospital. If we go to the regional hospitals, they even label every treatment center. Every region, if you if you think you, we can go around with you, they, you will see a center. They, they they put a place that a center for treatment. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we need to cooperate into general. Okay. You take your folder. Nobody's know. They oh this man. But people used to come to regions to come and sit to look at which people are coming to ah. take treatment. As well the communities, which there are no many. As well, I'm from Navrongo. I'm from though I'm not in Accra here. I'm from Navrongo. People will take motos to come and sit where people living with HIV are taking their treatment to watch the girls, you know, mm. man, to see people <laughs> who are coming to take drug. So I even bring the matter to Nursing Ace Control Program because they are in charge of the treatment. I said they should look at how they will cooperate it into. Into the main, main hospital. Center. I come and take yeah. my folder. Yeah. I know. I'm seeing even doctor can. We have one doctor. The doctor will take care of me. The same doctor will take care of you. Though they do uh, HIV, I mean, training small art. But mm -hmm. we are there all sickness. Yeah. So I'm advocating before I step down. And you know, the crisis oh. now, nothing there for. Things are not moving well now. Even, even commercial now, you know, see. They're even so you're now. talking about the economy affecting uh, the, even your. <laughs> Your advocacy as well. Advocacy and then uh, mm. the treatment. Okay. But we were luckily we hear that the president has released resources to to ma to local manufacture to 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 manufacture the treatment here. Mm. Then another is one and some of the, so you know it's not all areas. So we it's obviously good that we're manufacturing the drugs here in Ghana. Yeah. 
Okay. So let's talk about, you said uh, persons living with HIV AIDS in Ghana, mm -hmm. uh, they've acquired a land somewhere. Exactly. And you're trying to develop it. Yeah. What have you been able to do? Yeah. We sent a proposal to a letter they sent for an assistant. But there was no any response. Coca-Cola as well, that if they can assist us to develop that uh, project to uh, turn it into IG, that is income generating activity. We had a Popo family in mind. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The land was given to us by the chief of that town. Yep. And the chief showed much compassion. The which town again? Uh, uh, Chebi. Okay. If you're precisely if you're mm. Yeah. He has given us a very big, a vast land which we are intent to cultivate and um, but remind people again, why won't you work like everybody else is working? Because you can. Why do you want to develop, why do you want your own yeah. business? Actually, I work, not uh, being a regional chairman, a network of person living in HIV. We want to have such IGA project so that in case of, if there is a shortage of drugs today, there is no one to go and beg that they should give us money to organize press conference to let the government or the stakeholders know that oh, this is our problem. Or if there is a problem that we are facing as a person living with HIV, then we can have our own money in our coffee and just use it and come out for the stakeholders to see that oh, this is our problem. Okay. That is where we want to have, because we have widows among us, we have three children, we have people who are not working and we want to assist them. Mm. This is our intention. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, to add to what my brother said, uh, you know, if they call for, uh, in the paper that uh, they, they are calling for people, they want to employ people, and you are HIV positive, and you apply, that's why non treatment is there so people don't sick. But people don't want to take sick people in their company. But do they ask you, I mean, are you obliged to tell them that you're HIV you positive? You won't say, but after joining it, after joining the work, they will find a way to remove you because every month you have to go for treatment. And how can you be taking excuses from okay. your so director? Let, let, every let, month you let's go talk for. about the treatment. Yeah. What does it entail? I thought it was uh, maybe a tablet that you pick up and then you just swallow. Yes, it's a, it's a tablet. Okay. It's a tablet. Would you need a, day, a day off to do that? Even, yes, even now, even is easy. Because my drug, I'm then taking a one, a one tablet a day, okay. night, 8 o'clock. The following day, nine, eight o'clock in the night. Mm. So now even they put the bill first. They put it eight in the morning. Even some are even still taking eight in the morning, eight in the evening. You look at the time you are taking. Mm. So now for treatment now is easy for us. We are taking, taking some countries. They have been taking a, a, a four pills a month. Okay. One pill um, a week. One pill a week. So mm. four four pills you have. Any side effect? Yes, there's a side effects. There's a side effect from some, if you, st you start, but if you start and the treatment is good for you, you are going. Mm. Since 2003, I would say I didn't sick. So people, I say I'm a liar now because they see me, <laughs> they see me, they see you, me you, sick, and now they don't see them. Than other people, people with me who help. label me, this man is going to die. I see plenty of people die and I'm still alive, walking, doing everything. Yeah. So after death is for God, people who claim that even they know sick, they die. Yeah. And now, uh, even now, uh, anytime, uh, even if you tell my people that, uh, I like, I would recommend that everybody should even be taking the ARB because since you, you won't feel headache, you won't feel nothing. <laughs> we should not be taking it. I would recommend that if you take it, you can spoil your liver yeah. and those things because if you are not HIV positive. Yeah. But the drug is good. Mm. It comes to system and then we are enjoying it. Yeah. Today, sure. I would say since 2003, headache, no, no sickness. Okay. So any, any side effect for you? Yeah. For the side effects, initially, the drug that we take, there's Lamivudi and Stavudi. That's the name of the drugs. Okay. Yeah. Quickly, they have realized that oh, there's a side effect. At times, uh, it, it depends. It depends on individual. Some uh, ladies, when you are taking it for some years, it portrays your stomach as if you are three months pregnant. Oh. And some men, it changes your eyeball, okay. the color of your eyeball. And also, you look as if someone who has taken alcoholic drink when you take it. So you look drunk. You look, exactly. And quickly, they have now changed their drugs, okay. and now it's okay. Mm. Yep.
So no, no side effect? No, no side effect. The side effect or drug resistance will come when you stop taking the drugs mm. because it's continuous. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, also I'm also interested in the bit about sometimes when the people who employed you get to know that you're HIV positive, they find a way to kick you out. Yeah. Do you have some members oh. uh, who, have, who are telling their stories to you? Yes. <laughs> ILO even wanted to form uh, workers living with HIV, but I know them, they say, no, Clement, you know us, but we will not come together. Mm. Because you are a manager, you know, that's by government. You know, government workers, how many are they? The private sector, they are holding the chunk of the people. Today he wants production, and you say you are going for treatment. Why they want to know what kind of treatment you have been going every month? Mm. You see, so they will find a way of removing you. Okay. They won't say because of HIV they remove you. So that that is the problem. A problem. That is the big problem. And then they even if they even uh, you apply for, and they go to know. You know, after we can eat and live, but matter you do not talk. I don't know if you can add a voice. To mm. it. it has to be quickly though because I want you to also tell me what is planned for today. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It have to be quickly. Yes. I want to. Yep. What I want to add to my brother's uh, message is that, you know, when I apply for a job at this company, the company has its own hospital. Mm -hmm. Then he will ask me to go and do HIV a test, examination. a medical examination. Then the result they will not give it to me, but they will give the result to the, the company, director. to the director, and definitely I will not get a job. That is how. They do you, do you, do you it against the policies yeah. of this country that you shouldn't stigmatize mm. if someone is leaving with the virus, you shouldn't say that you are not going to employ him. But that is the strategy that the company uses. Yeah. Because every company has its own uh, hospital. Okay. Yeah. All right. So quickly in one minute, tell me what's, what, what the activity is for today. For to, you. Yeah. Today's activity, today being the well easy. Actually, we, um, already I'm here. Our people are Dodoa. That is how they are, uh, that's where they are starting. And we are ending it at Mamobi Polyclinic with the first lady, mm. uh, Mrs. Lodina Mahama. And that is where the speech is going to be, where that's where the debate is taking place. Okay, so it's, yeah. it's, it's all about sensitization yep. today and stigmatization, yeah. getting people And also not to, to mourn with those, our lovely brothers and sisters who have departed okay. to HIV. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Do you get scared that you're going to die anytime, any minute? Oh, no, 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 no. We are not dying. Mm. And what I want to also bring this thing to uh, the, the general public that if you want to see mental illness, mental health, mm. most of our people HIV disturb them and they say they are crazy and they carry them go post psychiatric. Some, those plenty of people, if they are HIV positive, it can suit and they will be like they are mm. mental. So my wife is one number one because. I go to know I'm on treatment while my wife is not on treatment. I go to know mental health. Mm. So before I now go to know yes. Even even AIDS conference in Washington, I went on topic on mental health and HIV. I okay. see that plenty of people they are in psychiatric instead of being treated, treated. for HIV. And they okay. say they are crazy people. Mm. So I want to use this opportunity. If you see your sister or your brother who think I coming, mean, you will think that he's a crazy letting test HIV. Okay. It will help. Mm. Listen, I appreciate your time this morning and I really, really like the education. Um, this is an eye-opener because every, every time we think we know and then you bring something else on board and we, we realize that we don't know. So I'm grateful uh, for your time this morning. We wish you the very best. Uh, my guest this morning on my banner, Clement Azigwe and Raymond Aholo mm. is World uh, AIDS Day. If you haven't tested, at least not in the last six months, please do. Mm. And the young people, like the Sheikh uh, Osmanu uh, Nuhu uh, Sharabutu said, stop jumping from one woman to the other. <laughs> uh, if you think you cannot stay without sex, mm -hmm. get married, have one partner. Stay with me, I'll come back. We're crowning uh, Monday on the AM show in, the, in a rather beautiful way, so stay with me.